were listening to another episode of the Business of Aesthetics podcast series, brought to you by our gold sponsors, MRP, Laser Optech, and Equa Marketing. We also want to thank our silver sponsors, Eilis Works and Pronox. If you would like to network and share your experience with our podcast guests and other aesthetic industry professionals, join our Facebook or LinkedIn communities by searching for Business of Aesthetics. Today, we're going to be speaking with one of the finest experts in aesthetics. Naren Arul Raja and Jeffrey Richman founded the Business of Aesthetics community in 2019 to help practice owners find fulfillment and success. Jeff and Naren have worked together for 12 years helping practices grow. Over to you. Good morning and welcome to another Business of Aesthetics podcast. Thank you for joining us again. We're delighted to have Narin Aruraja, CEO of Equa Marketing Company, EquaEKWA.com. And uh, Narin today is going to be sharing with our group how patients are buying aesthetic services in 2022 and, and a look beyond. So really how patients are going around figuring out which aesthetic services they want and then buying those services in 2022. I think it's going to be a really interesting subject and maybe different than what a lot of people think the uh, answers are. But Naren, thanks for joining us this morning. Oh, absolutely, Jeff. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah, I think the topic of how people buy in 2022 and beyond, how they buy aesthetic services, I think is an important topic, right? Um, um, I, I have heard this quote and it has guided me throughout my life. If you don't know where you are going, you're definitely not going to get there. So if we don't understand how people buy aesthetic services today, all the work we do from a marketing standpoint, from a you know a, a ad standpoint, is not going to help us because we don't understand how they buy. So we are kind of you know doing the wrong things because we don't understand how the patient buys. Well, I know that I have my own bias, but what do you think some of the perceptions are around how people I'm not saying necessarily how people actually are doing it but what do you think some of the perceptions are around people buying yeah I really think um, most people don't even ask the question how do people buy aesthetic services in you know today so it doesn't it's, it's not a thought that most doctors and practice owners even think about and think that's where the flaw is and a lot of times what they end up doing is they admire someone, let's say this famous doc, and they assume that that doctor walks on water and they go and look at that person's website and say, oh, I want to do what that guy does. But a lot of the problem is there's a 90% chance. And the reason I say 90% is because 90% of the web, 95% of the web pages get zero traffic from Google. So there's a 95% of the chance that website you're copying a doesn't rank on Google, so it doesn't really get a lot of traffic. I mean, imagine a, a house that nobody walks into or a store that nobody walks into. You're not going to do a lot of business because nobody walks into the store. Same thing with Google traffic, right? If nobody's coming there or very few people are coming there, only the ones who know, then you're not going to get any business. It doesn't matter how wonderful it is. So that's the first mistake they make. And also, just like these websites suck in getting Google to rank them, they also suck in getting people to choose them. Uh, and we are going to touch on some of those things. So, uh, and I think that's why asking the question, how do people buy in 2022 is a great place to start. And even you make a great point, even within the practice, probably most of us don't know where our patients are coming from because we're not necessarily asking. Maybe there's a fill out form. How'd you hear about us? But I'm not even sure we have a system to, to rank and graph it, even though we may ask the question, we may not look at the data. So I I think a lot of practices, the assumption is I'm getting all my business, like, especially for those that aren't spending a good amount of money marketing, their assumption is I'm getting all my business by word of mouth. I'm getting it all from referral and and word of mouth. You're bringing up an excellent point, Jeff. if you ask the wrong question, you will 100% get the wrong answer, right? 
I think the question, how did you find out about us, is the wrong question to ask in 2022. And the reason I say that is, um, you know, back in the day, this question came up, you know, going back to the yellow page days. Back in the day, information was not freely available. So the way you're going to learn about a doctor is probably you saw a big ad like on yellow pages or on a billboard or you mentioned somebody tell you that person. That's the only way you could hear about the doctor. That was 30 years ago. And if you're one of those people who has a ton of time to research, you may have even called, you know, the local board. So if you're looking for a dermatologist, you might you know, find out who is the association for dermatologists in my state and go to the yellow pages, pick up the phone and call them. But that's like very few people did that. So back in the day, the question of how did you find out about us made so much sense because people didn't have information. Today, information is like electricity. It's on always, it works always. And, and people use just Google alone like 8.7 billion times a day. So asking the question, how did you hear about us? is like a dumb question. And of course you're gonna get a, you know, and usually what they'll do is they'll tell you the answer they were telling you 30 years ago because that's what they're used to. I mean, of course, unless the patient is young and, or they'll tell you the answer they think you want to hear. Because we all think if I give you certain answers, I'll get VIP treatment. Like, oh, somebody told me. We think if I say somebody told me, I'm going to get treated well. I mean, that's the perception we have uh, because I was referred. So so a lot of times that's that's the mistake that many practices make. I mean, you were talking about asking me what are the common mistakes and yeah, that's another mistake they make. They ask the wrong question to find out what marketing is working for them. And you're, you're saying that because you're assuming that it's multifaceted marketing now and they're getting touched in a variety of ways that they can't pinpoint a singular way. Absolutely. And also, I think just like electricity, we take it for granted even 50 years ago or 30 years ago because everything was running on electricity. We take information for granted. Information is in our fingertips today. Like, I mean, if you ask a kid uh, who's 20 years old, you know, we used to use yellow pages to find businesses. He'll be like, what the hell is a yellow page? They won't even understand it, right? Now, even the older people in us, like how many times did you, you know, go and look at that mail you get in the mail? Most 99% of the time, it goes into junk, like at least in my house, and I'm sure that's the case in your house. How many of us even can even think of or even like imagine going to a physical book, getting out of our chair and going through that book to find a business? I mean, because information is like it's like it's like water it's everywhere it's on our mobile phones it's on our desktop it's like and it's milliseconds away i mean at least in the yellow page days it might take you a minute or two to just walk up to the place where you have the yellow page book and look it up now before you even finish typing in what you're looking for the answer just pops up so it's just information is taken for granted so asking people how did you get information is like asking people you know today about Oh, who do you thank for you using your, you know, washing machine? Nobody's going to say electricity because electricity is just given. You know what I mean? It's just taken for granted. So I really think it's a wrong question to ask. And you miss the whole point because when information was so scarce, you didn't need to be seen multiple times. You were seen once or twice, maybe max seven times. That's it. You're done. But now there's so much information. I mean, I have been reading stats that say the average person on a, in a single day consumes thousand pieces of information at least that's the minimum and some even like four five thousand so the game is totally different how do you stand out when you're getting bombarded with information like all the time i mean just on your phone i mean if you spend 10 minutes you'll get so many pieces of information you know you're on whatsapp you're on tiktok you're on this you're on that like you get so much information in a span of a few minutes so I know at the end of the day, you and I are both firm believers that Google is generates, you know, all the, all the origination of searches. Um, but even if we stay under this false premise that my patients are coming from referral business, uh, repeat business or word of mouth business, still within that group, I would say nine out of 10 would then Google that business to make sure they're still in business, see where they are, look at the reviews and do all the needful. So even in those cases, we validate the information we're getting from friends and family by going to Google. We use Google as a validation tool as much as we do a search tool. 
You bring up an excellent point. Um, we keep 95% of our clients, but we hardly get any referrals. You know why? Most doctors don't get up there and go and talk to other doctors about services and products they like. Because they're so busy just keeping up with their own lives. They're so busy just, you know, doing their work and, you know, taking care of their family. So I think, again, pre-internet, this group of people who were kind of um, people who spread information, there were quite a bit of them. Like, for example, I remember I had a guy I would call anytime I have a tech electronics question, a new computer, a new TV, anything I'll call this guy and say hey i need to get a camera like what do you recommend and he'll give me three things and he'll say okay if i were you knowing what i know about you i think you should get this right those people don't exist today but even in those days if you really think about it out of a hundred people only two or three are like those people who just spread information share knowledge and those are the people we go to but today i mean i go to google because google is you know thousand times wiser than my friend, even in the topic of electronics, because there's so much information, it has billions. So, and again, I don't want to bother my friend all the time. So I really think, because we, we think pre-internet, that's how the world worked, we kind of assume that's the world, the way the world works today. It's like, imagine going and standing in line to get a cab or going to the street to get a cab. Like, I haven't done that, like, in years. I mean, if you tell my kid about, oh, you go to the main street and you wave at the cab and there is a particular spot the cab would stop at and that's how you get a cab. Even like my daughters would laugh at me. You know, it's like, what? Like, are you living in dark ages? Oh, imagine like describing my Blockbuster experience. You know, Friday night, you go to Blockbuster, pick one of the few movies they have and then you come and watch it and then you all sit together in front of this TV room and then... Oh, I forget to return it, and then I end up with a bill of like 20 bucks, and then I'm begrudging Blockbuster. Like, our kids cannot even fathom it. And even I cannot fathom it because I haven't done it. So I think the thing about human race is we move forward. We never move backwards. So like the way we used to do things in the past is not how we do things in the present. But unfortunately, most of us don't take the time to think about these things. How did people buy aesthetic services 25 years ago? How are they buying it today? If it's the same, then I should do the same things. But if it's different, me doing what I did 25 years ago won't help me. You know, but it's a great, all great points. And yeah, it's, it's funny, the uh, analogies that you used, we, we really have advanced in so many ways. And some, some of them are so easy and basic, but most of it's to make it easier for us, right? We want the information delivered right to our laps and, and right away. So I want to jump in here into the meat of some of this, you know, how patients are buying aesthetic services in 2022. So I think we both agree that a majority, and I'm going to leave the percentages to you, but what percentage do you think start on Google? Yeah, so let me just summarize how I think people buy in 2022 based on all the research I have looked at. Studies show that 95% of aesthetic buyers today are sophisticated. What I mean is they are not like, oh, I have wrinkles, please help me. They are like, oh, I can use Botox. I can, you know, here are my three choices. They have done the research. Why? Because information is at their fingertips. So 95% of the people uh, start by Google. I'm sure you've heard the quote that says, um, 25 years ago, you go to a car dealership, the car, you know, the sales rep helps you find the right car, the right model, the right features, and tell you how much you need to pay for it, and you'll buy it, and maybe he'll give you a good deal. Today, before we walk into the car dealership, we know the car, we know the model, we know the features, we even know the price that we are going to pay for it. So today, like, decision making is happening before I talk to anybody, right? And that's the power of the world we live in. The consumer has all the information to make his decision before he's talking to a salesperson. Same thing is happening in aesthetics, just like in the car business. They know everything before they walk in, now they call your office. So they're using Google, 95% of the people according to studies, to arrive at those decisions. Okay, I need Botox, or I need this, and this is how much it should cost, and you know, here are the different people who can do that for me, and oh, this person seems to stand out, and you know, and all that stuff. So step one is they use Google to do research, right? And you can be the answer to their research. So when they're researching, your website shows up as part of their research. Now they notice your name, they click on your link. So you become the answer to their problem. Second is, 
the average person who comes from Google organic search will give you 90 seconds. How do I know that? We study, you know, hundreds of websites and that's kind of what we see. In that 90 seconds, they're trying to answer three questions. Do I like you? Do I trust you? And of course, the most important question is, can you do the job? Because we think everything is specialized today. In the old days, you hire a contractor, he would do everything. Today, you hire a kitchen person for the kitchen, the washroom person for the washroom, because you think you want the best washroom. And I want to have a guy who just focuses on washrooms. You know, so we tend to hire specialists. Um, so if I, even within aesthetics, you know, some people think, you know, somebody who's good at injecting Botox may not be the person who's good at lasers. So I want to find out the person that I'm looking at, is he or she good at the particular thing I'm looking at? So um, first use Google to find it, do the research. And are you the one they're finding as the answer to um, do I, can you do the job? And the two is in 90 seconds, they're trying to answer the question. Can, can you do the job? Do I like you? Do I trust you? That's it. That's how people buy today. It's really simple. In, in that 90 seconds, do they, I have a few, few different questions, but we, in that 90 seconds, do they, do they get to the website or are they seeing the Google, Google reviews, Google maps, Google, right? I mean, are they just in the search part of it? and exploring that way or boom, they click the website. Now they're in the website for 90 seconds and they're trying to look for the procedures that they want done or look for answers or before and after pictures for those procedures they want done. You, you bring up an exceptional question. It's an amazing question. And, and um, see, um, the person on the internet is like somebody driving on a highway at hundred miles an hour. Like they want to get in and out as quickly as possible. This is why, you know, you press the Uber button and Uber says nine minutes and you hit cancel and go to Lyft and, you know, get somebody in three minutes because you just cannot wait nine minutes or even five minutes. Like we are so used to this instant answers, right? So they're like, they're researching, your website shows up, they click on it and they give you 90 seconds to convince them that you are the one they should call or you are the one they should book an appointment with. That's it. If, if in 10 seconds or 15 seconds, their antenna says, you know what, this doesn't look right, then they leave. Why? Because it's so easy to hit the back button on the Google search, whether I'm on a phone or a desktop and then go to the next guy because there are 10 of these people listed. I don't need to waste my time, you know, studying you. So the Bible when it comes to web design is a book called Don't Make Me Think. Don't make me think. So if I'm interested in Botox, answer these three questions. Can you do the job? Well, if I have before and afters, and let's say I'm looking for Botox for wrinkles. If I have before and afters about, you know, the work you've done as far as wrinkles are concerned, are concerned and Botox, and I see some good pictures. Yeah, I think you can do the job. Do I trust you? Hey, if you make it easy for me, remember, I'm only giving you 90 seconds by copying and pasting exact Google reviews. We have people who got, you know, wrinkle treatment using Botox from you and on Google, and then you put it on the website, then yeah, I see three reviews of people like, this guy is good at, you know, taking care of wrinkles. And it's not him saying it, it's actual person verified by Google is saying it. Yeah, I trust him because 10 other people, I mean, this is why I, I send my 16 year old daughter on an Uber because 3,400 other people said this driver is not too bad. You know, he does a good job and he takes you from point A to point B and he's, he's good manners and he has 4.9 star rating. So I don't take more than 30 seconds to make that decision. You know, should I let my daughter take this Uber ride or not? Right. You know, sometimes we don't have time to pick her up and you like, we are like, okay, take the Uber because you know, the public transit is not going to work and blah, blah, blah. Right. That's what we want. We want fast decision making. So do I trust you? And, um, I think that's where, you know, uh, reviews come in. Um, if you had won awards, like, you know, a lot of times doctors may have won awards. So we have a platform called Doctors Choice Awards, where doctors who get the most amount of reviews from other doctors in a certain town will get an award. Hey, feature that award if you are the one with the most amount of reviews in your town. Why? Because we subconsciously think somebody who wins an award must be good, must be trustworthy, because why else would he be bestowed with an award, right? Um, and another key thing is liking, you know, do I like you? For example, um, 
I don't know if you have been following politics, but I've been following the elections in, in the UK recently. And um, the way the UK system works is the parliamentary system. So Boris Johnson, who was the leader of the Conservative Party, i.e. the Prime Minister of UK, resigned. There's some controversy and, you know, the, the, the members said they don't have any confidence in him. So he had to leave because if the members say, I don't have confidence, he's out. So when he resigned, now they need to pick a new new um, person to lead the party and therefore become the prime minister because they are the party in power. There's a guy and a woman, the two finalists. Every survey said every member of the Conservative Party who were the ones voting, they thought the guy was more qualified. He was more capable of being an effective prime minister. He went to the best schools. He was the finance minister. He knows what he's doing. But they liked the lady. She was more relatable. He came across like he's this rich kid from, you know, that place you don't know anything about versus she's like one of us. Who did they pick? They picked the woman. So how do you get people to like you in 90 seconds or less? You know, humanize yourself. If you have a family, show pictures of family. Why? Because a lot of patients have families. They are, you know, usually, you know, middle, you know, middle age. So maybe like 30 to 50. And, you know, so showing that you have a family, like pictures of your family with you. Wonderful. Some like to travel. I mean, half the people like to travel. So if you like to travel, you can, you know, help those half the people who like traveling by showing some of your pictures of you traveling all over the place. Um, so if we don't like someone in that 90 second, we're not going to go them go to them, right? Because we feel like, oh, you know, I don't know if he can understand me. I don't know if he can relate to me. Just like the British people did not pick the guy who they thought was more qualified and instead pick someone who they liked, same thing's going to happen with your patients. You know, do videos. So perhaps, you know, get, um, you know, let's say the Botox example. And simple questions that most patients ask about wrinkles and Botox you know, in one or two minutes. Now put it on your website on the on the page that's ranking for the keyword, you know, Botox and wrinkles or whatever the keyword is. Now when I go there, I see, you know, that video where you're explaining that. So I'm like, oh yeah, he's someone I can talk to. He's somebody I can relate to. Well, and he's someone that can meet my need because they're explaining how to do it right there. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, it's, it's, it's that simple, but most doctors you know, do medical, you know, MDs, and they study for 10 years. So sometimes I, I think it's hard for them to understand. It's so simple. We just have to do the simple stuff. <laughs> do you, Naren, on, I want to step back for one second. So if they type in Botox, and now they have 90 seconds on this website to know, like, and trust us, but do, um, do patients really just type in Botox anymore? If I'm a practice, am I worried about keyword ranking still? I remember back in the day, early SEO, there was something called long tail keywords. But can you just talk about keywords and ranking and all of that and the, the importance of that? Or, or is, that, is that different now? Are patients asking full questions? Or how does that work, like typing into Google and then having me pop up. Yeah, absolutely. This is an excellent question. See, um, think of Google like a genie that can answer anything. Of course, it's the answer genie, right? Uh, 25 years ago, that answer genie was not that smart. So you, you could only ask simple questions like dentist or dermatologist or med spa and the city name. But over the last 25 years, as Google went, went from being worth, uh, you know, a million dollars, there was a story that the two founders of Google were willing to sell Google for a million dollars. And the person who was thinking of making an offer said, oh, a million dollars is too much. And he walked away. I mean, today it's worth 1.5 trillion. Why? Because that answer genie became a lot more powerful today. So it, it's, a, it's a nature of human beings. Um, if I give you a choice between Jeff, go and stand, you know, at the cab stand and get a cab and spend 15 minutes and press a button and the cab shows to your house, 99% of the humans are going to go with the easier, better option, right? That's human nature. We want the easier, faster, more powerful option. Same thing with Google. As Google started getting better and better, humans started asking more and more specific, detailed questions. So like I'll use Thrive Portland as an example. Um, you guys get, you know, a six, you know, 130, 140 new patient calls every month. 
And that starts with 100,000 people finding you for 3,000 different keywords and phrases. 3,000 plus keywords and phrases. And I remember when we first started in 2008, that number was small, partly because people, Google was not that great, not that sophisticated. So people knew that if they ask very detailed, specific questions, they won't get a good answer because they didn't ask those questions. As Google got more and more and more powerful. So, I mean, just on the first page of Google, which, which means the top 10 results, you are ranking for thousand plus phrases. These are phrases like, you know, I want to make it very clear. These are not like Botox Portland. It's the best Botox treatment in Portland or best Botox doctor in Portland or um, Botox, uh, you know, uh, Botox um, before and after zip code. So they're typing in all kinds of combinations and variations of things. Just with Botox alone, I remember the last time I looked, there were 67 different phrases people are typing in. You know, some people were looking at wrinkles and some people were looking at headaches. I mean, there's all kinds of things we're looking at. So, mm -hmm. and people know that somebody who knows how to use Botox for headaches may not be the same person who knows how to use Botox for, you know, wrinkles. And again, you know, there's all kinds of applications, right? So they're getting into very specific questions. So and, key... and does does Thrive rank for all the all 60 of those theoretically? Absolutely. So these yeah. 67 I mentioned are ranking in the top 10 results of Google. So you are showing up near the top of Google for all 67 of those phrases. And the goal is not to stop there. I mean, who said 67 is the magic number? Why can't it be 85? Why can't it be 93? So it's one of those journeys. Um, the other point I want to mention is... Um, 95% of the web pages get zero traffic from Google for free. So you are in the 5%, but actually in many cases, you are in the 0.1%. That's why you are ranking, like in the case of Botox, 67 times. Because when you are in the 0.1%, you crush it, you own the market. And everybody else, the only option is ads, because you know they are definitely not in the 5%. So the only way they're gonna get any business is through running expensive Google ads. Well, and let's talk about that for a second. So when I, type in now to the search and I type in something more specific to what I'm looking for because I'm a more savvy searcher now than I was maybe 20 years ago. So I, I put in smart words. I, then the, what I get back are smart answers in the organic anyway. They really fit my needs. Maybe that's why I'm willing to give them 90 seconds. What happens when I use ads? Yeah, the average ad person only gives you 15 seconds and many will leave the website within three seconds. So there's no way I can get you to like me, I can get you to trust me and I can show you that, you know, I can do the job, I meaning the doctor. So, and the, and the reason they only give you 15 seconds on average is because um, they're typing in the keyword for both cases. So they're typing in, you know, wrinkles, Botox, right? You know, because that's kind of what they're looking for. They're looking for somebody who can use Botox to help with wrinkles. Uh, and they might even put the city name and your ad shows up, your organic shows up. Every ad is labeled as an ad. So the minute they're clicking, they're clicking with self doubt. They're like, anybody with money can do this, right? So I mean, literally, you don't even have to be a boat certified anything or even own a practice, you could be off your garage and run Google ads if you want. I mean, Google doesn't check anything, right? You're willing to pay money, you know, they'll take it. So they're clicking with self doubt because they're clicking with self doubt. They are only giving you an average of 15 seconds and it gets extremely challenging to convince somebody in the average of 15 seconds that, you know, they can trust. You us. can meet a need trust. And, yeah. And all of that stuff. So that's why you need to, sp you need to get like five, 10 times more people from ads to get the same results you would get with organic because you know they don't give you enough time to convince them do are there any other reasons other than getting patients to find my find my website um are there other reasons that i want to you know are there other is there more purpose to my website in nowadays than there was maybe 15 or 20 years ago it seemed like back when we used it almost as an information site like we didn't expect anyone to find it. We sent people there to say, oh, you can read about it on this, you know, and then they would go read about it on your page, but we didn't expect people to find those pages. Absolutely. Um, the, there are two primary reasons you want to use a website in 2022. 
number one in 90 seconds once they end up on that page that they are interested in you know through search convince them that they can trust you like you and you can do the job but the one before that is you need to be in the five percent that's getting 95 percent of the free traffic on google because think about it if nobody goes to that page or that website that web page is useless so the number one goal still has to be how do you rank or how do you get in the top five percent that gets all the free traffic so think of it like it's your tool to talk to google it's your tool to make google happy so for example lighthouse scores every single page is given a score of one to hundred in four dimensions if you're getting anything more than a 90 google gives you an a one more reason you're going to rank for more and more phrases um, is your web page loading fast again google gives you guidelines on what to do etc if you're doing it one more reason you're going to rank so you have to make sure the website also makes google happy uh, google even tells you like if you are in the healthcare field like all of our listeners are you need to follow something called google eat e stands for expertise so you need to put your bio on every page you know you need to put your videos on every page so google sees you as an authority you need to put your reviews on the relevant pages so google can trust you again you don't have to do it but if you don't you're not going to be in the five percent that gets 95 percent of the traffic so google is like you know we run a kingdom but we don't force you to stay in our kingdom but if you stay in our kingdom and you are in the five percent you're going to get so much benefit of course the 95 percent who don't get the benefit give us billions of dollars and we'll show you stuff too you know so google is like you know do you want to do the hard work and be in the five percent or do you want to give us a ton of money and you know and you still need ten you know five times the traffic because the patient will only s spend five which is good for google which means now you're buying even more ads to get the same results so um it, it's a great great business model i mean i wish i had thought of it <laughs> <laughs> well and also you're not just you're getting you're you're paying theoretically in that ad space but you're very specific in what you're paying for so you're you're not getting hundreds of you know people that are doing ad ad words are usually picking a few keywords they're not picking three four five hundred keywords and they're picking botox which is a really expensive keyword they're not picking the 66 other things that people are searching for you are 100 percent right and, and i mean like all mature businesses as Google got mature, they also realized people waste a lot of money on ads. And it's in Google's interest to help you waste more money on ads. And I'll give you an actual story. Um, we had a vet veterinary client. I mean, they were getting 150 you know, calls from organic and from new patients a month. And uh, they wanted more because you know they opened up a new office and you know they wanted that new patients. So before we started managing the ads, they were doing it on their own. And doctors are busy, right? So the ad said you know if you are so narrow we won't be able to show you to anybody so they said keep widening keep widening keep widening so they were using the word hospital and th their ad was showing up for regular hospital even though they're a veterinary hospital right and of course people are i mean i don't want to use the word stupid but they don't read so they click on the link every time they click on the link ka-ching 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 money goes to google i mean and most people didn't catch it. So when our ads team, so we do have an ads team that's part of our service. We don't charge extra for it, that's all included. Um, so when our ads team took over, they're like, you're wasting half of your money in all this garbage. But you know, when Google has to make $200 billion, you know, they will make that money in every way possible. And if it's coming from you wasting money and most doctors have no idea because they don't get into analytics, they don't look at the details, uh, they'll take it. You know, so I, I don't think that Google does it on purpose, but I mean, it's you are the one who's choosing to bid for those keywords. You are the one who's widening the search. You are the one who's because you have to do negative keywords. So we ended up having to do so many negative keywords. So any types of variations of these hospitals don't show our ad. Show our ad. We had to literally name the hospitals because we knew all the ten hospitals in the area, and we have to like say no, 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 no. Like we had to do negative keywords. So um, yeah, I mean ads just like organic is a big you have to focus on it if you don't you can lose a lot of money but the metric i use is how much is it costing you to get a phone call so if you are spending and get you know and getting a phone call for 10 bucks on organic and if you're spending and getting a phone call from for 100 dollars on ads you know i wouldn't focus on ads till my organic is maxed out because it's one tenth as expensive right so it's like 
you can get a you know car for ten thousand versus a hundred thousand. It's exactly the same car. Actually, it's even a better car because they trust you more. The ten thousand dollar car in this particular example, why buy the exact same car for hundred thousand, right? So it's just the same 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 thinking. So ninety five percent of our clients, or ninety percent of our clients, ninety to ninety five percent, depending on the month, uh, they don't do any ads, uh, and the reason is they don't want to pay five or ten times more. Yeah, I think a lot of times viewing an ad to protect your brand or if you're doing a specific event, it may make sense. sense. Um, or, you know, just to, to add word your own name, knowing that other clinics so that you're coming up, uh, then you would be coming up first in the ad, but you would also be first in the organic. So, it, right. you know, like Coca-Cola or Target or any other large company, you would expect the, the same thing. So Naren, thank you. I mean, it's been really a interesting conversations about how patients buy aesthetic services in, in 2022. I know um, you, uh, I, I, I know you have an offer that you want to leave with people to look at their websites, but I, I want to ask you one final question, which is, we talked about the question not to ask, but if I'm if I'm in my practice now and I'm looking for new patients and I'm not sure where my patients are coming from, and I may or may not have data or metrics, which I know you love because it's definitive and it's, it's always right versus our thinking, which isn't, but how, how do I go about, you know, deciding um, to look at this metric, understanding that I want more, what, what, what step do I take? Yeah, I really think in 2022 and beyond, you have to get used to data. It, it just, it, there's no other option, especially if you're going to depend on the internet to drive new patients, which I think 99% of the you know practices do. So I think the step one could be start tracking your new patients. A simple thing could be a call tracking number. So in other words, you're running an ad, use one number. You're you know, doing something else, use a different number. So you can at least start counting how many calls are coming from each. And those nowadays have become a commodity. There are so many people that offer that kind of service for like a hundred bucks or something. Uh, even leads, start categorizing them. These leads came from this source. These leads came from the other sort. So at the very, at, at, the, at a very basic level, you want to know how much is a phone call or a lead costing you from each source. Because now you can start comparing apples and apples because you have equalized it. Because at the end of the day, you don't care, you know, where they're coming from. You care that you're paying the least amount of mass, you know, money possible to get that lead. Um, so that's the way I would start. And I really would stop asking the question, where, how did you hear about us? Because it just wastes everybody's time. And it's like, you know, going in the wrong direction, you know, like, um, yeah, how do I put it? Um, the, somebody was in a in, you know in the dark looking for something and uh, and uh, and he's like uh, where did you drop your stuff I dropped it over there but then the guy goes why are you looking here because this is where the light is you know it's kind of like that you know where you need to look where you drop the stuff you need to really look what people are actually doing and that's why tracking is important asking people in 2022 is just you know like I said they take it for granted this fact that they have so much information so you're never going to get it's like they do this 100 times a day you think they're going to remember what keyword they type when they type where they were they're not going to remember it like if you only did it once a day like in the old days when we looked up a yellow page book we will remember it but we just live with information in our pockets all day long so for our listeners i know equa offered to do a, a special uh, uh marketing strategy meeting can you just spend a minute and and uh, go through that uh, offering for our group please absolutely um so um we want uh, to make sure that the clients we take on we know where they stand and also that helps them because they know where they stand so what we do in the marketing strategy meeting is we spend six hours prior to the meeting studying the nine areas google pays attention to we have nine teams to work on those nine areas plus the five areas we pay attention to convert those people who, who see you on Google to phone calls. So that's what we call helping people choose you. So they we'll study. Real quickly though, you, you take their website, you take their website and then you break it down into the, you break their individual, they give you their domain name. And of course they ask you, so they fill out this form saying, please look at my website. 
And then you break that into nine areas and your teams go look at their website for them. Is that? That, that is correct. But we don't just look at the website. We look at what's happening on the internet around their name, around their brand as well. Because today, internet and the web, website, think of it like it's a conduit to you and Google or you and this, you know these people sending you traffic. So, But it's just a piece of the puzzle, like your Google reviews, your NAP, which is not on your website. It's on other people's websites, the, the way your name, address, and phone number is represented. So we look at the internet as well as your website, and we study these nine areas to do with Google and five areas to do with influence or helping people choose you. And we'll tell you how you stand. We'll also give you a 12 month plan. If we were to work with you, what we, we would do um, sometimes not too often, but sometimes clients are doing really well. In those cases, we are like, a, 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 keep doing what you're doing. Don't mess with it. But most of the time, like 85, 90%, you know, because we put 200 hours up front and 30 hours a month once a client starts with us minimum that really helps us get them to that top five percent and keep them there because most marketing companies don't put the 200 hours up front nor the 30 plus hours monthly they don't really get them at the top and then keep them at the top so they're not ranking for many keywords they're not doing all the things google wants so we'll point out whatever we find and that's what happens at the end of the marketing strategy meeting it's a 900 dollars value no cost to you it's ekwa sorry um uh, businessofaesthetics.org slash MSM. Businessofaesthetics.org slash MSM. Yeah, either way, or, or equa.com forward slash MSM. Slash MSM, exactly. You can do both. And um, and at the end of it, um, we'll give you a proposal for one year and, you know, several people who like yeah, what I think it's say. a no-lose proposition because you either get to pat yourself on the back or you get to understand areas that you need improvement, even if you don't. Uh, start with Aqua, you, you still would know areas for improvement. I will say, having been a client for 15, 17 years now, um, you'd be crazy to not go with them if, if they do identify um, things. And like Narin saying, I think because his team is so large, they have close to 200 employees, they're able to employ people to really spend the time. If you have a firm with three or four people working in it and they have 50 clients, there, there is no 30 hours a month to spend on each client. And I know Narin has used um, a variety of different tactics to employ, but some include overseas and others to minimize the expense for our uh, physicians, but still being able to give them the benefit of all the hours needed to really do this successfully. And Google Google wants you to, Google demands you put the time in or you put the money in. And that's, so you're putting the money in either way. Um, the difference in what Equus doing is you're putting the money into uh, long-term into organic uh, search versus something, you know, like Google AdWords that just gets turned on and turned off. So thank you again, Naren, always a pleasure. You really, give great information to our group and it's why I love having you on these um, periodically. I know we hear from a lot of physicians sometimes too. They all have terrific ideas, but at Business of Aesthetics, we're trying to give you information to improve your practice, enhance your lives, um, make, make, make practicing the Business of Aesthetics more fulfilling to you, uh, more fun for you. So Please share this, like it, go on and give us a review. This is how we keep going. Um, share with your uh, friends on Facebook, our group, LinkedIn. We have an Instagram group now. Join all of them. Join one of them or join all of them. Start asking questions, engage. Um, we appreciate you being a part of our community. And thank you to our sponsors uh, for uh, continuing to support the business of uh, aesthetics and transparent exchange of information. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us this week on the Business of Aesthetics podcast series, brought to you by our gold sponsors, MRP, Laser Optech, and Equa Marketing, and silver sponsors, Eilis, Works, and Pronox. Would you like to join our growing group of aesthetic industry experts and get featured on the Business of Aesthetics podcast? Or do you know someone who would love to share their strategies for growth in the aesthetics business, providing quality patient care or their clinical expertise? 
head on over to www.businessofesthetics.org slash podcast dash show and apply to be featured as a guest on the show. Remember to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Music, or wherever you listen. If you would like to engage with today's or any of our past speakers, join our Facebook group or LinkedIn group by searching for Business of Aesthetics. Thank you and have a great day.